What is up, my YouTube family? Welcome back to Money and Life TV. My name is Mike. This is my sidekick, Chipper. Reporting for duty. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about what school expenses are tax deductible and which ones are not. In other words, what school expenses count and which ones do not. If you're new to our channel, I just wanna take a moment and say welcome. Highly consider subscribing, because every single week on this channel, I produce new videos to help you with your personal finances, your investments, taxes, and your everyday life. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. Now let's go ahead and get started. The expenses we're gonna be talking about in today's video are actually expensed or deducted through either the American Opportunity Tax Credit or the Lifetime Learning Credit. I encourage you to watch this whole video from start to finish because at the end of it, I'm gonna go over some very specific rules that you need to, to meet or qualify for. Otherwise, none of the expenses we're gonna be talking about in this video are gonna be deductible. Just so you guys know, all of the information I'm presenting in this video is coming from IRS publication 970. It is like the Bible of education deductions. It's nearly 100 pages of information on education deductions. That is found on the IRS website, but I'm going to link that up in the description section below this video, so make sure to check it out. And it has all the information you'll probably ever need on education deductions. So let's talk about what fees are deductible. Of course, your college tuition fees are gonna be deductible. Also, enrollment fees and other necessary fees required for enrollment or attendance at the university you're planning to attend. Now you might wonder if student activity fees count. They do as long as they are a condition of enrollment. The next most common expense that students have is for their books, right? So the books you need to buy in order for you to attend that class and be successful at that class. So your college books are gonna count as well. So in the publication, they talk about things called related education expenses. So books was one of them, which we just mentioned. Also, other related education expenses that are required in order to be successful to attend that university are things like your supplies, right? So things like your, your bind, I don't know what you guys use, but things like your binders, you know, paper, pencils, pens, highlighters, scissors, glue. I mean, I don't know what classes you're taking, but just overall the supplies you need in order to be successful in the class you're taking and what is required in that class. So like you probably need a flash drive or some sort of device in order to save your, your files on, your papers on, things like that. So your backpack. So overall things like that, just very, there's tons of different supplies. You know, you might need use sticky notes or something else, but in general, your school supplies are gonna be deductible. All right, a big question people have is whether or not a computer is deductible. Because another, another category is computers and equipment. Overall, computers, from what I've seen in the real world, computers are generally deductible. Not in all cases, but most of the time they are. So if the college you're attending and the classes you are attending, if it requires you to work on a computer, if you need to go purchase a new computer, then that computer is going to be deductible. Now what's interesting, I've looked all over the IRS website and they don't give any guidance or any dollar limitation for how nice of a computer you can buy. So, so I know some people use that as an excuse to go buy gaming computers. Now, honestly, if you want to be fair, you don't, you know, I wouldn't count a gaming computer as a necessary expense. However, if you're, if you want to take an aggressive tax position, you could probably do that. But I would just look overall at what's a reasonably priced computer in order for you to attend college. And that's probably anywhere from, I don't know, 600 to $1,500, I would guess. So if you want to be aggressive and say, well, I'm going to buy a $3,000 laptop gaming computer and that's required for school, well, that's your call. But overall, I would say that in general, computers are deductible, but be reasonable about how much you spend on them and how much you deduct. Equipment is another one. So if you're attending a class that requires you to buy certain equipment in order to attend it, then that equipment is going to be deductible as well. Okay, so those are the general expenses that qualify. Now let's talk about what expenses do not qualify. And really the way to think very quickly determine whether something qualifies or not is if it's a personal expense. So listen to this list and you're gonna see what I mean. So your room and board, the room and board you have to pay in order to attend college. So whether you're living in the dorm room, whether you're renting an apartment, those expenses do not count as a qualified education expense. Another thing that doesn't count is insurance. So your auto insurance, your health insurance, things like that, those don't count. Your transportation, oh, I know, I know you're hoping I wouldn't say this, but unfortunately, I know you have to usually use transport to get to school. Some people have to drive or take a bus. Unfortunately, your transportation does not count, so keep that in mind. So if you're gonna go buy a new car hoping you can deduct it, nah, you're out of luck. 
So then, and in general, anything else that would not be deductible was, any, you know, anything that's related to personal living expenses. So obviously, guys, your gas, your food, you know, just personal expenses, you know, clothing, things like that, they're not going to allow you to deduct. So that's common sense, right? We can't deduct that in any other area of a return either. So personal expenses in general are not deductible. So that's the easiest way to determine it. The last thing that I want to mention that is not a deductible education expense is any education expense you pay for using tax-free money from things like scholarships or grants, okay? So that, since you're already getting a tax benefit with tax-free money, they do not allow you to take a tax deduction as well because that would essentially be double dipping, right? Tax-free money and tax and, and expense, no, nah, they don't allow you to do that. So just, but just remember, any, any expense you paid for with scholarship or tax-free money, you cannot count. Now, I know there's schools and colleges of all different kinds across this whole country. So there's hundreds of other things I could probably mention, but you're so like, you're, but you're like, Mike, what about this? What about that? Well, if you're ever unsure the, of what you can deduct as a qualified education expense and what you can't, after all of my research on reading through that publication, what I found to me, at least in my opinion, to be the golden rule is, you have to ask yourself, is that other thing, whether it's a supply, whether it's equipment, whatever it is, is it necessary either for enrollment or is it necessary in order to attend that class? And if you're unsure what you can do, I would start with asking the professor of that class, say, hey, is this required for me to be successful and attend this class? And if they say yes, well then absolutely, you're gonna have to go buy that item and it's gonna count for you as a qualified education expense. The other way to determine it is look at the teacher's syllabus. A lot of times they'll list those things out in the syllabus. So when you ask your, you know, if you want written confirmation, I would probably just email that question to your teacher and then have him or her respond back to you in an email. Then you have written proof that that item is required for you to, you know, is required for you in order to attend that class if you were ever audited for any reason and if these expenses, these education expenses you were trying to deduct ever got called into question. Okay guys, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there's a couple rules that are very important that you need to know about and consider. Just remember guys, the first one is, is that can you claim yourself on your tax return? If you cannot claim yourself on your tax return, none of these education expenses are going to be deductible. So especially like if your parents are paying your way, those ex these expenses are going to be a your parents are going to be able to claim them and unfortunately not you. Now what you're like, well, what if I pay it? What if I pay this, these expenses personally? It still doesn't matter. It all starts with based on who can claim you. So if your parents are claiming you on their tax return, you're not going to be able to deduct any of those expenses. That's number one. The second main rule, and by the way, guys, all these rules are in the publication, so I'm going to encourage you to go look at that because that has all the formal definitions. There's not a lot to read on it, but just that's where I want to send you and re recommend you go to learn more about this. The next one is, is the school you're t attending an eligible higher education school according to the IRS? That's really important. According, not all schools count. So some schools and universities are not accredited. If you're ever unsure if, if that's an issue, you can ask the, the person, go to their enrollment office at that school and ask if they are an accredited school. And there's also a list I'll leave a link for you in the comment section down below. There's like a federal list that lists every university in America and it will tell you whether they qualify or not in, return, in terms of this tuition you pay and these education expenses you want to deduct. So make sure to check that out. The third thing is you have to be an eligible student. So refer to the publication 970 for that and because and each school has different requirements in terms of you know what, how many hours you need to attend or how many units you need to take at a minimum in order to attend their university, things like that. So make sure you are an eligible student. Okay guys, this was a quick general overview of what expenses you can deduct and which ones count towards those education credits. Now in regards to those education credits, I have videos on those, so make sure to check them out. I'll link them up right here, and I'll also link them in the description section below this video. I have a video that does a full overview on the American Opportunity Tax Credit and on the Lifetime Learning Credit. And like I said, these deductions are still going to be in play even after the new tax laws are passed in 2018. So make sure to check them out. Those will give you a full overview of how those things work and how those credits work. Go check out those videos. Check out the IRS website, which I'll link up below, that will, will talk about all the education deductions and credits. 
and check out the publication 970. And I'll have all those in the description section down below of this video for you guys. All right, guys, that's all the information I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful. If there's anything I explained that didn't make sense, or if I can ex explain something better, or, or if you just still have questions, it's fine. Just drop them in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to get back to you and respond. If you liked the video, make sure you smash that like button. If you liked it, share this information with a friend, especially a friend who has kids in school or somebody who's about to go to school and is wondering about these tax deductions. And also be sure to subscribe to our channel if you have not already, because every single week on this channel, we produce new videos that are gonna help you improve your financial position, career and life. And we do that by talking about finances, investments and taxes every single week on this channel. All right guys, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I love you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this. And until next week, I will see you guys in the next video. Love y'all. Peace.